It's not about complicated things, it's about simple things and doing them exceptionally well. And if you do this exceptionally well, extraordinary well, you will stand out. What's going on? Coach Luca back here with Coach's Corner. We've kind of had a series on semi-private personal training. And this one is almost like an overview of, I mean, what it actually is. Like there's still a lot of people that one, don't do semi-private personal training uh, or do it in a specific way that may not be the most beneficial to them. I started doing this a long time ago, probably a decade and a half ago. Um, so a lot, a lot, a lot of reps. The person that taught me was Alan Cosgrove, uh, who was, I think, the first or one if not one of the if not one of the first definitely the, if not the first one of the first in, in the u.s that was doing this and so let's even look at what semi-private personal training is remember i don't believe one-on-one -on -one training is dead i don't believe group training is dead. i don't believe small group I, whatever you're doing and you're crushing it and you're great at it you're going to do well at it but from a business perspective and an impact perspective semi-private personal training just like small group personal training makes a ton of sense now this is still individualized so i have to actually write this out later with the arrow right here because i didn't put it up first so what it, what is it here at vigor ground i've heard a lot of different i would say um models of it but for us it's one coach with up to four to five students now when i say four to five what does that mean if there's a new coach that's coming on board hasn't done uh i would say semi-private personal training you're not gonna have like okay great you're gonna do four semi-privates you know, as you start coaching. No, you're going to go to two and then you're going to get comfortable with that and you're going to go to three. But ultimately, when you have experience, you can be at four to five. You know, great example, like what's today? Uh, so a couple of days ago, uh, a couple of hours back to back, I'm coaching between five to six semi-privates, right? And so I'm, obviously I've had tens of thousands of refs at this. And so I can do this with no problem. And the great thing about it is you're impacting a lot of people. So, you know, for example, let's say you do a six hour coaching day five days a week, right? So that's, if you have one-on-one -on -one clients, that's 30 hours, that's 30 clients. Okay, so now if you do those same 30 hours with three semi-privates, eventually you're doing 90 sessions. So you can affect a ton more people who have more repetitions, make more money while the person pays less. But we're gonna get to that, right? So for us, it's one coach to four to five students. With an individual program, like this is still a question that comes up and a lot of people say, hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. So it's not all the people doing the same thing. No, every person has an individual program. Now we do have templates that help us build these programs out depending on the goals of the clients, but that's the key. The key is it's still individualized. And remember, if I, I've mentioned it in previous logs, but you know, we'll charge around 60% of a one-on-one. -on -one. So an easy example with this would be if your one-on-one -on -one session is a hundred bucks, you're gonna see your semi-privates be like, you know, 55, 60 bucks per session in a membership base because we don't sell by sessions. But just to give you an idea, which means that a person could train with you double for the same price, right? So they can get more coaching. You, on the other hand, you know, let's take this. If you have, for, for example, three people in a semi-private, that's $180 at 60 bucks versus one-on-one -on -one at 100, right? So it's just a simple example of how it's better for people, the business, like everything, right? Now, again, the individual programs are delivered in a group environment, okay? So if you guys have seen any of the behind the scenes stuff that I'm, when I'm training people, you can see like there's multiple, like sometimes there'll be an NFL person and somebody, you know, girl working on her, her physique. And then there'll be somebody that's coming back from an injury. Like you got a lot of different people. And this is what I heard this from uh, the first time from Joel Sanders. What we do is sprinkled coaching. Okay. Joel Sanders from Exos. Sprinkled coaching means that like we're, now look, it's, it's more intense. I'm going to go to the pros and cons of it, but it's what we're moving around. And we're sprinkling our coaching. Where we're at one-on-one -on -one session, you might coach and talk to the person. It might be some awkward silence, depending. Here, it's like, we're moving around. I'm coaching this person, coaching this person. Everybody gets one-on-one -on -one intention. And I'm sprinkling that coaching throughout the session where I'm going to get a lot of reps and a lot of contact points to a degree that that person will actually feel like it's one-on-one -on -one coaching. And that's the goal, right? And so going back to the pros and cons, like, and obviously this is going to lean hardcore onto the side of the pros, but there are some calls that I'll explain them and how we sold them, right? So one, less expensive membership. Again, look, simple, simple caveat. Like you train twice a week with, uh, with a one-on-one -on -one and you're doing a hundred bucks, that's $800 plus tax so on and so forth, right? For us, that's around 475 to 497. So you get drastic, you know, you can either train more or spend less. The support, the tribe, the accountability is much higher. Now, listen, as much as if you're an awesome coach, kudos to you, I promise you this, when people have a community and they have a tribe that holds them accountable, it's much more powerful. When, it, when they have a, a community that they come to, 
that it's not just about you. It's about everybody else. It's about the environment. It's much more powerful. Now, I always tell people, by the way, like this is something that I explain to clients when they come in, three types of accountability. So the client will have the accountability from you, the coach, okay? But then they're going to have accountability from peers, meaning there's people that are right where they are in the same journey. So it might be starting off, right? So accountability from them. But then they also have the accountability of the clients that have achieved the goals that they want, okay? So people on the same journey with them just starting off, people that are already ahead, and then you, the coach. So that's three forms of accountability, right? And that's powerful. Now, if you don't have things like semi-private, that's more challenging to do, okay? Better results, motivation. Look, the reality is I, when I worked at a big box gym uh, at Vision Quest, you know, I said, like, look, I want to do semi-private coaching. And the answer was like, oh, it's not going to be as good as one-on-one. I said, okay, give me a test. Like, let me test it out, right? And what happened? People got better results, right? There are better compliance, more motivation. Again, it was other people cheering them on, bringing them up. Then they start texting. They build friendships. Like, hey, you coming in today? I can't tell you how many people are like, hey, I wasn't going to come in today. But I got a text from my, my, my gym friend that's become a real friend. And I came in, right? So that helps you. Scheduling flexibility. Hey, some of these, you know, stuff happens. I got a four o'clock. If it was a one-on-one, they can't come at four. Well, I got somebody at five. Sorry, we're gonna have to reschedule for another day next week. Guess what? At five, well, I got three semis. No problem. Come in at the, at five, at the next hour. I got you. You got the program. We can rock and roll, right? So more flexibility for the coach and more flexibility for the client. It's less boring for the coach and the client, meaning let's be real. Like I did, I remember doing 13 one-on-ones back-to-back on Mondays. Back to the, this is like legitimately probably like 2007, eight, somewhere around there. And I'm not, look, there were certain clients I was really excited about coaching, certain clients I wasn't as excited about coaching. But the point being is when you're coaching multiple people, it's more, you're more on, right? You're more focused. It's never boring. I'll tell you that for anybody. So that's a big one. Okay. Coaches get ton of practice faster. So if you come to figure ground and you're, you, and you're a coach and you start moving in from a one-on-one role to semi private personal training role, Hey, guess how many more reps you're going to get, right? Because now you'll be coaching multiple people. So how many squats are you going to see when you're coaching two, three people, four people, uh, you know, in the same session versus if you're doing it one by one by one, right? We're speeding up the experience of it. Now, of course, there's a reason why we coach people up so they do a great job, but you're going to learn faster, right? And guess what? This is the probably, you know, if you're in it for the right reasons, you're going to help more people, period, right? Sounds like a pitch fest. I have nothing to sell you. This is I'm, the only thing I want to sell you is like the model that's going to help you Hope, help more people and make more money. So the cons, well, I, this is what happened too when I, you know, transitioned even at the big box gyms was that people that have never done it before. Clients think that one-on-one is better than semi-private training, right? And look, I'm not even saying here's the deal. Like for some people, they're like, nope, I want to have one-on-one. Cool. I just had a great podcast with Todd Durkin today and, you know, where he ran into this thing where he's very, very busy, he was charging a certain amount, wanted to get more of his co- uh, a coach's clients. And he doubled his rates like overnight. He was completely packed. It was like, you know, a lot more demand than there was supply. He doubled his rates. <laughs> Unfortunately, like, he didn't lose anybody. But this is what I'm trying to say, you know, right? What you can do is you can elevate those one-on-ones and focus much, much more and provide a much, much better service in that area and do semi-private coaching, pr- provide a ton of value in that area where you're coaching multiple people, right? So this is some of the communication aspect for you as a coach to get really good at to promote that semi-private. Um, it's harder. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nowhere to hide. Like you have to be on, you have to be on. I'm like, when you're coaching, when you're great in my private or any type of coach with room training, you're going to be on. Like I always tell people, you should have a little sweat going at the end of the session. Cause you're getting after it, right? You're focused, you're on, you're coaching, you're moving left to right. Cause right. Cause you're moving around. You want to get a lot of those touch points. So that's a very, very important factor here. Also, Harder to address nutrition. Now, I want to kind of go into this one a little bit and dial in into the nutrition part here. Um, so initially, what you're going to do is have the client intake form, find out more about where that person is nutritionally. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. Obviously, determining the communication. So ours is through email. Obviously, certain clients too, if they prefer to also text or any type of messaging platform, that can be helpful. Office hours. I call this office hours. So you decide how you want to do office hours. For example, you want to do office hours for nutrition once every two weeks, and it can be a Zoom call. Anybody can come on and talk to you about nutrition. Now, they still get access through email, right? They still get that communication and that coaching, but the office hours allows for scalability because you can have a lot of clients. They can submit forms. Like we do a lot of type form, but they submit problems, questions, so on. 
There's check-ins on Sundays where they can submit forms. And then on those office hours calls, they can now get that individualized attention to help them out, right? So that's one way of doing this as you scale that business part. Um, this could be an issue, but not a bad one. Higher tax bracket. I know you're not, you're not tripping about that one. Here's the deal. This question comes up a lot. How do you, like when, when we're getting, I would say a lot of the gym owners and coaches that we help transition to semi-private because it's such a better model for their business. And we go like, how do you group uh, people? What do you base it on? Do you base it on age? You know, like, oh, similar ages, let's group them for that. Is it experience? Like, oh, these guys have been training for years, so let's put them together. Is it goals? Oh, fat loss goals, rehab goals, muscle building goals. Is it capabilities? Oh, they're, they're pretty capable. Let's put them, none of that. The only thing that matters is time. What time can you come in, right? You want to you come in here at a, a certain time, you're going to see it like NFL veteran pro to a, a school teacher, to an exec, to a kid that's 12 trying to make the baseball team, you name it, right? Like a very, very different people. Time is the most important factor. And again, going back to like, why is it harder? Well, guess what? Because you got to build your skill set, uh, skill set up. I actually think that this forces you to be a great coach. It pushes you to be better because if you're not, you won't be able to operate in semi-private, right? But it's so, it's so much more beneficial when it comes to impact, money, results, the whole, the whole shebang. So it's only time. What is their schedule? Remember, we, we operate, our businesses operate on when people can come in to train, right? It's not like when we want them to come in and train, it's when can they actually do it, okay? So that's why this is the, the, the most important factor. So a couple of things, another question we get, how do you keep track of data? So, well, two ways, obviously technology has blown up, but I still believe like if you go upstairs, you'll see there's folders. We got these green folders, people's names on it, printed programs, and obviously every month printed out where they can write in the numbers of, um, of, the, of what they're doing, the weights that they're lifting and everything else. Well, we'll get to in a little bit, right? We'll get to in a little bit. Who should write that in? Remember, our main thing is coaching, but I love, you know, uh, now that you have apps, I continue to recommend, I have no affiliation with it. John Gum is a good friend of mine, but quick coach because it's free. Or if you, you know, if you brand it, I think it's like 30 bucks a month, very low. So now you can, you can create templates in it. And now if people, you can ask them like, Hey, do you want to get your program on an app, right? Where you can plug everything in, or do you just want to print it out? You know, some people are still old school, like, Nope, give me the printout. Some people want an app and there's other apps, you know, true coach is another good one. I could probably go down a list of pretty good, pr pretty good apps, right? something that's friendly, but for, if you're starting off and you're like, Hey, I don't want to have a lot of expense with it. Quick coach is either free or if you brand it, it's a very low expense. So that's how I would go track data. Even on a small group personal training I've talked about before, I would go that route. Okay. What do you do with a new person? Uh, I brought this up before actually in our previous vlog video about customer experience for semi-private, but that I would advise if you can, if you can, you're doing a one-on-one -on -one session with them, right? So you, now you have better expectations for them and you know better how they're going to operate in specific training sessions also when you, if you have experienced clients my biggest thing is like not bringing you know not bringing multiple new people into a semi-private session or bringing a new person when you have three to four other people because that might be overwhelming right so you can bring that new person in when there's maybe one to two other people and you can go to those folks and go like hey listen this person's new i'm going to spend a little more time with them if they're experienced they'll have no problem with that so again just making sure to have that foresight and making not putting them into an environment situation where they feel like whoa like so much stuff is happening I, you know i'm not i don't feel safe i'm not being uh, paid attention to because that can be an issue and again that comes down to skill sets organization uh and just thinking things ahead and preparing right other other practical stuff preparation of programs you know kind of like this rule you want to come 15 before your first session you should be there at least 15 minutes before that and look through the programs. Who do you have? What program is going on? I've talked about four by six cards so many times. I, I want to burn them into your brain. That's another way of being able to have, again, more organization for the day. Not just the programs for the clients, but four by six cards or notes is where you can look it up and go like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, they were playing soccer. They said they had a little bit of a knee problem. All right. I see that we have uh, like these uh, walking lunges. All right. We might have a modification here, right? Like be prepared. Okay. Be prepared, but you want to be early for that, right? Remember that clients become human clipboards. Why is this important? Because our main function, our main goal is coaching, right? So they'll have the programs, they'll have it on the app or writing it down because we're not 
carrying everything around and writing it in. Now it's taken away from what we're best at coaching. What's cool is that like if that is the principle and that's the model, people like do that no problem and uptake it. Right? They get finished with a trap bar deadlift, boom. All right, they put in the numbers, right? They, they write down their numbers. Right. And it's, it's what's cool too is if you come to Vigor, you'll see at the end of a small group training session, semi private, things are done. People pick things up and put them back. Right. It's teamwork. Right. It's teamwork. And the thing is, that's how you have to develop it the culture, the experience of it. Okay. Pre choosing suggested loads uh, at the end of during workouts. So, this is one of the things I think is very, very powerful. So, if I do a training session and during that training session, this person, uh, you know, trap bar deadlifted 225 for four. Right, we did three sets of four, and they did that. I'm gonna predetermine next week's lows. Now, does that mean that they're gonna do exactly that? No, but I, but because of today's session, I'm like, okay, everything's going good. They're resting, this, that, the other. We're gonna shoot for 235 next week. I'm gonna put it down, okay? Because a week later, you might not be able to remember. So especially once you get to, I got to a point where I got, I had so many clients that I was very good at keeping programs in my head. That's not a great way to do it, right? You get, when you start writing everything out, you got everything laid out, and then I would write it out like, hey, this is what we're doing next week. Now, if next week came and they're like, hey, I didn't sleep, so on and so forth, guess what? I look at the previous week, and I might adjust, I'll, I'll adjust things. But that's, this is a big one, though, right? Pre-choose suggested loads for next week, okay? Or the next, uh, again, the next training session. But usually it's going to be the next week for that day, right? Equipment setup. Uh, if you have multiple coaches, obviously we have multiple coaches doing semi-private training, Talk to them a little bit ahead of time. Hey, what do you have today? You got, I mean, we have a lot of trap bars. We have a lot of squats. But like if you're in a facility where you got two squat racks, right? You got two trap bars. That's it. But you got three coaches coaching. Organize, communicate. Even again, even if it's like a, a, a space where you have independent contractors, you're not working for, you know, uh, the same company and still communicate. Be like, hey, listen, man, I just want to make sure everything's flo uh, flowing smoothly. My clients are having this, that, the other today. Let's make sure we can either share Put, put plates on, off, so on and so forth, right? I think this is just a quality etiquette of coaches that I sometimes don't see enough of, right? But it's like, we're all trying to help people, all trying to improve their our businesses. And again, if, if you're in a company under, under, on, under one roof as a team, then we're 100% working together to make it as smooth as possible for the client, right? So equipment setup. Also debrief session. I mentioned this um, in one of the reels. So one of my favorite questions here is like, do you feel like you've moved closer to achieving your goals today? What a great question to open up for them to say something. Whether it was like, man, I came in feeling, you know, not that great, but absolutely I do. Just me showing up, completing this. Usually I would have backed off or whatnot. So th that's a powerful, powerful thing, right? Having a little debrief at that. And I think at the beginning, it's important to have kind of that as well. Okay. And then let's go through a coaching checklist. I think this is an important one and you can kind of use this. You can modify it. Because it's very easy to like fall off. Okay, number one, arrive 15 minutes prior to the coaching session and prepare. We talked about this. Again, look at the client's programs, have four by six cards. Another thing I really loved I, when I talked to Todd Durkin about this was, you know, writing out all the little things when you talk to clients that they mention, have for each client, have like notes, right? So notes that are personal, that might not be anything to do with the program, because now those are the things that you can bring up in a training session. Read a client. Uh, by name and check them in uh, at, the, at the beginning of the session, right? Depending on what CRM system you have. Uh, again, for us, Vigaro Pro, you're ticking it off so that you know that they're there and that everything is being tracked because KPIs are very important, guys. I talked about that. Assess training readiness. So sleep, last time they ate, you know, do I have the pain in the knee, shoulder, low back, right? Having that communication, like, hey, how are you feeling today? I know last week your back was tight. Um, you know, we got deadlifts today. How are you feeling? All right, we're doing a little extra warm-ups. And then we'll see how you're feeling. We might make some adjustments, right? So that's the thing you want to do. Is assess training readiness. While checking in with clients, make sure that you program weight progressions. From the previous week, now you can go like, hey, today we're going to work on progressing this way and that way. Hey, uh, our top set. So we're going to go with these loads, our top set. We want to hit a five-pound uh, five PR today, right? We're going to try to add a rep on the lunges, right? We're not going to go up with weight. We're going to try to add a rep. So that's part of the thing that we're doing before establish the sections you'll be using with other coaches, work the floor, and coach your ass off. So again, this is another one of those things where somebody might be like, hey, listen, we're going to be using the trap bar deadlifts. Okay, great. You know what? We're going to do a little bit of an extended warm-up. Let me know when you're ready to go. After that, we have this, so we're not going to cross paths with our equipment. Again, these are important things because let me tell you something. I've seen this before when I've gone to consult for other gyms. 
where coaches are running into the problem and it's like they're like hey were you doing this what and then all of a sudden it becomes not a great experience for the client because there was a lack of communication right so something that's very very important there utilize the sprinkler method while coaching by the way the sprinkler method is one of the hardest things to learn okay this is where you got to get a lot of reps in study it look at great coaches that are doing it and then again mirror that and practice it right so you might you know I, i'm going to probably film a session in the future to see how many touch points right you have if i have four people in a semi-private session throughout that 60 minute session how many touch points of individual coaching i'm sprinkling in i may if there's a team training session going on i might be coaching my semi-privates i see somebody here doing a trx roll and cranking their head forward and i might step right here and be like hey tall spine hips back core boom right like i'm sprinkling coaching left and right right i'm coaching my ass off the whole day so this is very very important right client turns in their program to a coach if it's a folder if it's on an app it doesn't matter but if they're done it's like all right thank you coach bolt here it is it goes back into uh i would say the full uh, the, the folder files where they are by name and it is printed out and end of shift clean the training floor file programs and check respond to any emails i mean that's the ideal way to do it that like you actually check and respond to emails of clients before you leave for the end of the day uh, again that's just a productivity tip because a lot of times people leave and then do stuff later but this is better because it's on your mind you're in that work mode you're in that coaching mode and then when you're done shut it down right so that's just a simple checklist because remember it's not about comp complicated things it's about simple things and doing them exceptionally well and if you do this exceptionally well extraordinary well you will stand out right you stand out as my friend paul moore says like a fart in an elevator so we're going to do more of these nuggets and these compartmentalized semi-private training models to help you improve your coaching business. So if you'd like to see more of this, make sure you comment below. Also, make sure you follow this channel because every week we're dropping, every day we're dropping new shorts and every week we're dropping new vlogs. So see you back here at Coach's Corner. Coach Luca, peace out.